All right, let's talk about the environmental systems for our Titan T51 Mustang. What do we mean by environmental systems? We mean the heating and cooling for the pilot. So it's important to us based in here in New England to be able to have heat in the winter so that uh, we can fly year round, as well as some form of being able to stay cool in the summer because it gets very hot in the summer as well. And we've got that big bubble canopy that's going to have a lot of solar radiation heating up the pilot. So Titan Aircraft leaves the heating and cooling system up to the pilot because of course you're the builder of the aircraft and you're going to be the one deciding uh, what, what systems are necessary. And of course if you live in a really hot climate you might not care that much about heating in the winter. For us of course we do. So. Let's orient ourselves here on the aircraft and what we're looking at. Now, this is the forward baggage compartment. Starts up front here, that's the firewall. Engine is in front of there. We've got this uh, baggage compartment. There's a floor right here that we've removed. And then we've got this nice open space underneath. Now, two things about the way that we have to handle our heating system. Number one, it's a water-cooled engine. We're using that uh, Chevy V8 engine, and uh, just like a car, it's water-cooled. That means that we need to actually use that coolant for our heating system as well, again, just like a car. So those coolant lines come in underneath here in this area, and then we have the ability of routing them through what's called a heater core. So we got this uh, heater core and blower system here from Summit uh, Racing and uh, being an experimental aircraft we get to use racing components as well for cars um, which is very convenient because it has these uh, inputs here that you can see these two tubes for the inlet and the outlet of the uh, coolant and then it has this built-in motor and what we're going to do is we're going to locate this underneath in this area actually it's going to go right in the footwell area and then be able to blow hot air through there, which is very convenient because of course uh, you want a lot of your heating to be coming in low so it then rises with the temperature. Uh, but we do need to sp spread it out throughout the cabin and we also need to be able to address uh, the uh, uh, mixing of it so we don't want it all to be hot. We want the ability to have cooling uh, in the summer as well and also even in the winter we want to be able to change the temperature. So the other consideration we need to have here is that keep in mind the way that a Mustang looks we have just those stacks of exhaust going down the front of the the, the uh, engine and that means that the side of the aircraft is going to be where all the exhaust is which means carbon monoxide so we do not want to have any scoops for fresh air on the sides of this front of the air, uh, of this part of the aircraft uh, where the exhaust is coming out instead we can have it on the top or have it on the bottom and so that's what we also have to uh, consider here. So we've got that. We know we're going to have at least the, the ability of having this heated air by our feet. What do we do about the rest of it? Well, my good friend Paul Morell down in Locust Grove, Georgia comes to the rescue. Paul has built uh, a couple Kit Fox aircraft and just happened to have lying around this air box that is from a Kit Fox. So what's great about this? Well, it has these two two and a half inch uh, input areas and a nice little valve that closes them off and alternates between the two. And the output are these two inch uh, lines right here. So what that means is that we can put the heat into one of them. We can put the cold fresh air, which we're going to get from the top of the, uh, uh, of the uh, compartment right here. Uh, and duct in and then the pilot can vary between the heated air and the fresh air. It'll come out through these lines and go into uh, the uh, vents that the pilot's going to be able to control. The other thing we're going to do, we're going to add a third vent output here and we're going to route that back for the rear passenger. So we're going to have three vents and then we're going to have some uh, heated air that'll be able to come out at the bottom right around the feet of um, of the pilot. And that should cover all of it and allow us to vary between fresh air and also uh, between heated air. The last thing that we're going to do is we have to feed air to this fan. They, the air has got to come from somewhere and this area is all closed off down here. So we are going to cut a return air hole from the footwell area that's a little further away from uh, where that input is. And then that will allow us to recirculate air from the cabin 
And then lastly, if we want to, we can put a vent in the bottom of the cowl area here and you can control that and then the pilot can allow fresh, cool air into that area to be used by the fan as well. It's a little complicated. We'll show you all the steps as we go through it, but we wanted to get this system in place now before we start putting all our skins on and things get a lot harder to get in there. The goal here is to get systems in place, wallets open, and, uh, and then move from there. So let's take a look at it from another angle. All right, I'm sitting down here uh, pretty low next to the fuselage so I can orient you to how it's going to work from inside the cabin. We already looked at it from the front side. So this uh, uh, area, we've removed the rudder pedals and this is our lower footwell area, right? So this is where the feet of the pilot go. And um, what we're going to do is this is where the cutouts and the ducting is going to be this lower section for where that uh, heater core unit is going to come out. Then we're going to duct all of that up and we're going to use this heater box and that is going to get mounted right about here. Now orienting you to the rest of it, this area here is where all the radios go. Um, so the radio area is here. This is the instrument panel and so really we have this space to run ducts that are going to come out that way. And then we have these two inputs, one on the back and one on the top. The one on the back is what will run down here and come straight out of our heater core. And the one on the top will come out and then imagine that this is the top here of the cowl area. And we can just put a, uh, a little adjustable door that opens up and scoops fresh air away from the exhaust system straight in. And between those two systems, we should have a complete heating and cooling system for our T51 Mustang. Let's get to work.
So now we need to make a bracket to support the heater core that we have here. This is our heater unit. It's got a little insulation that we just sprayed in there to close some of the gaps. And uh, around back again, our input and output for uh, the heating and the motor. So we need to mount this to that lower footwell area and I'm gonna make a bracket in order to do that. So let's get that laid out. All right, so all the building blocks are now in place for the heating and cooling system on our T51D Mustang build. So what do we have? Well, we have a couple of these push-pull control cables. These are gonna get installed in the cockpit a little later on. They control two things. They control air to our feet uh, for our heating system, and so that also you saw that valve that's at the bottom of the footwell area. We also have another one that controls the actual air mixing box where we mix cold outside Side air with the heated interior air and uh, that controls the actual temperature for what goes inside. Other than that there are actually two other things that also are controls. We have this electrical control switch which came with the uh, uh, the unit from Summit that we've already tested that uh, has a fan that powers and pushes air throughout the cockpit and that works very well and gives us a good even amount of air just like we were hoping to have and then we also have these ball vents. They'll be three of them installed in the aircraft. Two of them will be for the front passenger, one on either side of the instrument panel, and the third one will actually be in the center tunnel right there for the rear passenger where they can adjust it and get some air as well. So I think a really good system and the building blocks that we'll need moving forward is already there. So until next time, be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free Social Flight mobile apps. They are fantastic. They have tens of thousands of aviation events and destinations, the Fly to Win Challenge, with thousands of dollars of prizes, all sorts of very, very cool things to check out, especially if you like airport restaurants, fly-ins, you name it. Until then, I'm Jeff Simon from Social Flight. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel here. It's just at Social Flight. And until next time, blue skies.